So why should civil society and women be at present in peace processes? Well, the answer is basic common sense as far as I'm concerned. What we know is that 50% of peace processes tend to fail when they're exclusive and just in the hands of the men with the guns predominantly, whereas the research now shows that that 50% failure rate is actually reduced by 64% when civil society has had a role in the process. I think that what happens is that when you have an inclusive process, it brings accountability and it brings the voices and concerns and the capacities of different stakeholders to the process of both ending the conflict and peacemaking. It's common sense. It's a very important meeting because it is a almost unique opportunity that has been created largely through the activism of Syrians women's rights activists along with the support of international NGOs. For the first time, I think in this process, they are going to have the opportunity to really address not only the mediator, Brahimi, but a range of key stakeholders, including some of the most influential member states, the executive director of UN Women, and the High Commissioner on Human Rights. Wealth International has been working with Syrian women and civil society organization for more than a year. This event is an important cornerstone of this work uh, in which we are bringing together uh, representatives from civil society organizations to talk with member states, uh, with Lakhtar Brahimi, with the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and UN Women to ensure that women has their legitimate place at the peace table and in the peace process. The Syrian crisis is at a critical point as it possibly moves towards negotiations. Always a difficult time to enter or not to enter negotiations. And it is important at those times that we listen to uh, the drive from the United Nations and those member states who are calling for the full and complete involvement of women. It's important that the peace negotiation is not only about the men's with the guns. Uh, women and civil society need to be represented at the table to make this peace agreement a possibility for sustainability and to create a legitimate process in which we can see uh, a new and democratic Syria develop. And of course we all hope that this is just the first step. I think the challenge going forward is going to be to make sure that this isn't the end of a process but really the beginning of the engagement of Syrian women in the peace processes. My experience in Northern Ireland shows that where we formed the Women's Coalition, uh, took part in the negotiations and we as women were able to help the process develop we were able to help develop relationships between the more antagonistic parties, create a dynamic within the process, bring different views and issues to the table, and indeed bring different perspectives to the issues that the main protagonists were, were bringing there. It's going to take time, but we don't have that much time because the conflicts that we're seeing have changed so radically. There is, there's no longer a monopoly of violence by the state. There's actually a democracy of violence. And we need to bring in the voices of nonviolence to try and address and challenge that and change the paradigm.